aka Dreaded Nomad from the Big Island of Hawaii and today I'm coming to you with the second video of this whole new series and this one's going to be the different types of nomads. Now like I said in my last video you do not have to follow any which way 100%. You can mix and match, take traits from this one, you do this from this one. I mean the whole joy about this lifestyle is there's no right one way to do things. You do things that get you from A to B in your best interest the way you would like to do it. Alright guys, so let's get into this list. Um, number one, we're going to go with the Digital Nomad. And this is the one that is very popular. It's more talked about. It's the thing you hear, you know, it's the kind of nomadic movement you hear about all the time. It's pretty much just people who move place to place, but they're dependent on technology to make a living. So with that, you know, they could be bloggers, they could be videographers, cinematography. You could be having people do photography work, freelance is a huge one. I mean, if you can do freelance work and you can make money while you're on the road, it's like, it's pretty cool. Uh, graphic design is another one. I've uh, known a couple of graphic design. I've known a lot of people doing mini startups. So, you know, they're trying to do their own kind of thing. Usually they do work nine to five type of hours. And the ones that I've met, the ones I've known personally will do five days during the week and they'll take the weekends off. Alright guys, number two is going to be the spiritual type of nomad. The spiritual nomad is going to be the kind of person who does travel place to place, kind of searching for meaning, enlightenment, you know, kind of kind of the person that's just, you know, taking life as the full adventure, full journey, whatever happens, happens kind of thing. And usually these kind of nomads will travel, they'll learn a bunch of stuff, but then they also like to teach others and try to get others to open their eyes and you know open their kind of horizons to you know different alternate ways of living so this this type of nomad is going to be you know more than not they're going to be a little frugal because they're going to be a little bit broke if not fully broke um they're kind of just living it for the adventure and life in general they're not really thinking too hard into the, the money and all that kind of stuff that was a good one all right guys now the third kind we're going to talk about very briefly because I've only met one of them and it's pretty straightforward, it's going to be the corporate type of nomad. And the corporate type of nomad is pretty much just going to be someone who does traveling for their work. You could work at a corporate office but get sent around the country to do meetings and do stuff like this. You have a lot more downtime than you would if you were working at the company and going right to your home. So you, you get to mix travel. Alright guys, so the fourth type of nomad that we're going to talk about is going to be the volunteer slash house sitter. I don't house sit, so let's take that out of the equation. When I do that, I'll make videos about that, but let's keep this relevant. There's pros and cons, just like everything else. So I'd say the volunteer nomad, what it is, it's more so work trade. There's no money in exchange. It's pretty much you're doing anywhere from 15 to 30 hours. Your accommodation changes drastically with whatever farm or location you pick. Um, you know, you could either be doing 15 hours and sleeping in a tent on someone's property with no food provided. You could be doing 30 hours with a nice place inside of a home to live with food provided. You know, it's pretty much one of those things where, you know, if you want to be ultra minimal, you don't want to work that much because you don't want to give too much of your flexibility away, then you could do the tent thing. If you don't want to do the tent thing and you already have a little bit of money saved up and you don't mind to do 30 hours, then you can get, like, the full free living um, I haven't paid rent in three years. I haven't paid utilities in three years. I pay my cell phone and junk food. I'm not even lying. I haven't paid anything like that in three years. If I can do it, you guys can do it. And if I can make it enjoyable, I know you guys can make it enjoyable. So for the international people watching, um, most of the time you don't need a work visa to do it because there's no money in exchange. But I will tell you from experience of talking to a couple people from Singapore, when you are in customs and you are coming to America, do not tell them you are coming to do a free work trade on a farm because it seems like it's slave labor. Which, I, I don't know, I think that the line is very... I don't know, like, I... Yeah, because they just think it's like slave labor, so... The people that we met, they weren't allowed to come on this property. So my situation, what I do in the volunteering thing is I do 20 hours on the farm for my room and board and food and then I also work at their bakery for 20-25 hours for paid work so I'm half and half I kind of you know I'm working all the time which is why these videos aren't coming out that fast my bad guys but soon enough I'll be on the road and I'll have a lot more free time to do this stuff so I'm kind of doing the half volunteer and then I'm working a job the other half so it's, it's all pretty nice the next nomad is going to be seasonal workers so seasonal worker this is awesome 
seasonal work, you go on a website, and this website is called Cool Works. Go to Cool Works. You can either search by state, you can search by job, you can search by season. It's all seasonal work, and most of the time it is in national parks. It's going to be in ski lodges, um, just lodges in general, resorts, uh, adventure tour companies like in Alaska. You can go to Colorado and you can do ski mountain things. You can also go and do whitewater rafting guiding things. I mean, you could. The jobs are fun on top of you getting paid, and most of them do have housing available. You do have to pay a certain amount a week, but they deduct that out of your check. You know, you work anywhere from four to six months. Six months is really long. Four to five months is a standard contract, and once your contract is over, this is the best part. You can either choose to do another seasonal job, or you can choose to take a season or two off, depending how much money you have and how long you think you can stretch it, whatever you're comfortable doing. This is like the best situation I can come up with now. I would use farms for when you have a vehicle and you have money and you're between seasonal jobs and you want to go and you know you want to create a little hub somewhere. Say you want to stay somewhere for a month, meet some people, take a load off, sleep a little bit, you know, kind of you know just just see new areas, and then pack up and go to your next seasonal job. It's like the best. Alright guys, so give this video a huge thumbs up if you liked it. Um, give this video a thumbs up if you didn't like it just because. Subscribe if you're a new subscriber. Um, thank you for coming back if you're already a subscriber. And look forward to new travel videos because I'm very excited to get this going. I'm excited. Uh, my savings is already starting, which means I'm going to be leaving in a couple months. So things are going to get really cool. Drop topic ideas. Drop questions. Drop anything in the comments ask me some questions i want to do some q a videos ask me whatever the hell you want i'll answer it just because it's funny all right guys i'm out look for the next video within the next all right guys i'm out look for the next videos in the next couple days and shoots bring in the instrumental rasta